quieten down a bit. <laughs> okay, so today our topic is quite interesting. Uh, it's on steganography. So uh, many of you are probably wondering what is steganography. Well, <coughs> steganography refers to the art of hiding a secret image within an ordinary message and then extracting it at its destination. So this was invented way back in ancient Greece in 440 BC where slave masters actually tattooed words onto the head of bought, safe, bought slaves and then uh, let the hair regrow again and uh, they'll send the slave as a messenger to another person and that person will shave the head of the slave to read the message. So uh, this is probably not very secure because imagine if I'm the slave, I would probably, if someone did that to me, I'll probably run away and the message will be uh, revealed. <coughs> so different uh, mediums can be used to hide the message. So in modern times, steganography is a lot more, uh, it's a lot more secure. So we can use a software to hide site we can use a software to hide clear text within images and then uh, the recipient of this image can then use the same uh, software to get the text from the image. So uh, people use technography nowadays to, to hide payloads within uh, innocent looking files so that antivirus cannot detect <coughs> these payloads and we can then take advantage of this point to send malicious <coughs> code into a system. So these are the few common types of image technography and uh, the, because of time constraint, the one that we are focusing on today is the least significant bit technography or the LSD, which is used on BNP image file types. <coughs> so if you see the diagram on top, uh, each of the BNP uh, bit layers are actually representing different shades of a color. And when you add all these uh, layers together on a stack, it becomes an image. As you can see on this slide, uh, the image becomes more and more detailed as you add more and more planes on top of it. So now I'll pass the time over to Jonathan who will be talking more about this topic. Okay. So there's actually a uh, different method on detecting the least syndicate bit psychography. So the first way is actually to use an entropy function. is to measure the number of randomness within an image itself. However, since we are just hiding the data within the least syndicate bit, we can see no difference between the before and after of the hiding of the image. So the second method, which is actually his, the histogram, which is actually a, a graphical representation of the distribution between of these bytes from minus 127 to 128. So how do we actually hide uh, the message within the least million bit? First, we actually convert the ASCII code into binary bits. And let's say the first three bits, we append it in the last, we get the byte data from the bitmap, the, the three bytes, and then we apply a 254 mask to, the, to clear the last bit, and last but not least, to all the last bits of the three bytes. So this is, ex for example, this is the original image histogram when there's no bytes being hidden inside. So the range is between one hundred minus one hundred twenty seven to hundred hundred and twenty eight. And this is the example where you use the traditional method to hide. So you can see that the, the edges are the original image are all smoothened out versus the image that is jacket all over the area. So this means that there's something being hidden. So how do you actually modify the this significant bit? So before that, we have to learn, we have to know the concept. If we actually change the last bit, right, we change the byte value from 165 to 164 in this case. So you take away one count from, from, uh, from the total count, you minus one, and then you add the byte value of this 164 
you add one to it, and so on and so forth for other byte values. So actually, we have uh, many different cases that we can uh, see that there's different case where you need to check so that you won't have um, many rough edges around the graph. So actually this whole thing is actually an algorithm to check whether before encoding it to the last byte. So the first case is actually checking before you add the new byte you have to check and then you have to check for subscription of the old byte. So for example you the mesh threshold of you won't want this middle guy to over exceed the left side if the left side is higher than the right side at first and you won't want this guy to exceed also the right hand side so this is the to check the back threshold so for the subtraction as well you wouldn't want it to actually go below this to make it a groove and for 3a and 3b as well so this case is where the middle is the lowest of all. So you actually wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to, uh, you would want to skip this if the, the old byte, because you don't want to deepen the groove. But you will check that if this is not the case for the new byte, this is not the case for old byte, but if the case for new byte, you wouldn't want it to over extend it to the, uh, over the lowest point. So it, this offset is skipped. It looks like this because you want to avoid it deepening the groove. So for the last case, for case four, it will look like this where the middle is the highest. So we will check if the new byte looks like this, you, does, you don't want it to further it, extend even further in the middle. But if you want to subtract the old byte, you want it to retain it as much as possible. So you wouldn't want to uh, this is the threshold. You wouldn't want to subtract lower than the highest, next highest value. So for the code is in Java. So as you can see that you put the, you create a new array list and you create a hash map for histogram. So basically this function is to convert the entire image into, uh, into a dictionary where you store the main different bytes value in, inside a, a hash map. And hash map is the same representation in Python, which is the dictionary. So you actually look through the each and individual bytes in the hidden text and look, look through each bit in each byte. <coughs> and then you can see that you get the in value for each bit and you end it with the 254 masks and then you all it with the with the bit that you want to hit, you want to hide. So this is actually the code for checking the new byte. <coughs> so before you actually check for the old byte for each value, you can check the case. So once you check the case, which is actually you can see that you check for the three A case first, you check for three B case first. You check for case two and then you check for case one. So within the same, within each on every checking of the new byte, you also check the old byte. So you check for the, you check for case four B, and then you check for four A four B, and then you check for case two and then you check for case one. And after that, is notice that uh, if any of the byte doesn't fit on the requirement of the check, it skips to the next byte. So actually, the hiding is as contrast to the traditional way of hiding it sequentially of each byte. You actually skip some bytes. So you need to actually store this index that you hidden into another text file. And then uh, it's being uh, write, written out in another text file. So how do we actually decode it? 
you pick the size of the entire message and then you shift it bit by bit by left and then you or it to the to the least significant bit of the image by one and then you do it eight times. So this is actually the the example of the e for the text file. But however the text file will be bigger than the hidden text. So the only way to solve this is to encode it into base sixty four. So this is actually uh base ten, right? So if you encode it into base sixty four you actually save space. You compress it and encrypt it and send it over encrypted channel. So the other guy can actually receive it securely and decode it. So you can see now that when you modify it, right, you can only see edges here that is jagged. The rest is all mostly so moved and out. So you can see that if I don't give you the original histogram, I give you this, you won't really actually know that there's something hidden because this is more over than this. So you can see that the three images, right, are all appearing the same in the naked eyes. So now I actually show the demo. <coughs> so you can see that this is the, the main function to encode the text. See that you create the, the array list, you create the hash map, you store the you store the image in the hash map, and then you iterate through, and then you do all the checkings. And then you write it out in the file. So when I run this program, right? So when I run it, it actually shows me all the histogram. And then you can see the three different images. This is the original one, this is the standard one, and this is the enhanced one. So actually three of them looks totally the same. And then this is the the input text. It's a very very long text, random text. And this is the the output, which is exactly the same. And this is actually the the index file, which is forty four megabytes compared to few hundred kilobytes for the text the the input file. So it takes quite long to open open, open the file, especially on the <laughs> Okay, uh yeah, just any questions? Except the image is actually quite large, so actually there's a space constraint. Constraint. So a small image, but there's a larger. Image. Yes, correct. 